And now chapter 8 of the Antya Leela, Ramachandra Puri criticizes the Lord. Let me offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who reduced his eating due to fear of the criticism of Ramachandra Puri. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the incarnation of the ocean of mercy. His lotus feet are worshipped by demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. All glories to Nityananda Prabhu, the greatest of mendicants, who bound the entire world with a knot of ecstatic love of God. All glories to Advaita Prabhu, the incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He induced Krishna to descend and thus delivered the entire world. All glories to all the devotees headed by Sri Bhas Thakur. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is their life and soul. Thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Jagannath Puri performed his various pastimes with his own devotees in the waves of love for Krishna. Then a sannyasi named Ramchandra Puri Gosani came to see Paramananda Puri and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Parmananda Puri offered respects at the feet of Ramachandra Puri, and Ramachandra Puri strongly embraced him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also offered obeisances unto Ramachandra Puri, who then embraced him and thus remembered Krishna. The three of them talked about Krishna for some time, and then Jagadananda came and extended an invitation to Ramachandra Puri. A large quantity of the remnants of food from Lord Jagannath was brought in for distribution. Ramachandra Puri ate sumptuously, and then he wanted to find faults in Jagadananda Pandit. After finishing the meal, Ramachandra Puri requested, My dear Jagadananda, please listen. You eat the food that is left. With great eagerness, Ramachandra Puri seated Jagadananda Pandit and personally served him prasad. Encouraging him again and again, Ramchandra Puri fed him sumptuously, but when Jagadananda had washed his hands and mouth, Ramchandra Puri began criticizing him. He said, I have heard that the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eat more than necessary. <laughs> now I have directly seen that this is true. Feeding a sannyasi too much breaks his regulative principles. For when a sannyasi eats too much, his renunciation is destroyed. The characteristic of Ramchandra Puri was that first he would induce someone to eat more than necessary, and then he would criticize him. Formerly, when Madhavendra Puri was at the last stage of his life, Ramchandra Puri came to where he was staying. Madhavendra Puri was chanting the holy name of Krishna, and sometimes he would cry, O oh my Lord! I did not get shelter at Mathura. Then Ramachandra Puri was so foolish that he fearlessly dared to instruct his spiritual master. He said, If you are in full transcendental bliss, you should now remember only Brahman. Why are you crying? Hearing this instruction, Madhavendra Puri, greatly angry, rebuked him by saying, Get out, you sinful rascal! Oh, my Lord Krishna, I could not reach you, nor could I reach your abode, Mathura. I am dying in my unhappiness, and now this rascal has come to give me more pain. Don't show your face to me. Go anywhere else you like. If I die seeing your face, I shall not achieve the destination of my life. I am dying without achieving the shelter of Krishna. Therefore, I am greatly unhappy. 
now this condemned foolish rascal has come to instruct me about Brahmin. Ramachandra Puri was thus denounced by Madhavendra Puri. Due to his offense, gradually, material desire appeared within him. One who is attached to dry speculative knowledge has no relationship with Krishna. His occupation is criticizing Vaishnavas. Thus he is situated in criticism. Ishvara Puri, the spiritual master of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, performs service to Madhavendra Puri cleaning up his stool and urine with his own hand. Ishvara Puri was always chanting the holy name and pastimes of Lord Krishna for Madhavendra Puri to hear. In this way, he helped Madhavendra Puri remember the holy name and pastimes of Lord Krishna at the time of death. Pleased with Ishvara Puri, Madhavendra Puri embraced him and gave him the benediction that he would be a great devotee and lover of Krishna. Thus Ishvara Puri became like an ocean of ecstatic love for Krishna, whereas Ramachandra Puri became a dry speculator and critic of everyone else. Ishvara Puri received the blessing of Madhavendra Puri, whereas Ramachandra Puri received a rebuke from him. Therefore these two persons, Ishvara Puri and Ramachandra Puri, are examples of the objects of a great personality's benediction and punishment. Madhavendra Puri instructed the entire world by presenting these two examples. His divine grace Madhavendra Puri, the spiritual master of the entire world, thus distributed ecstatic love for Krishna. While passing away from the material world, he chanted the following verse, O my Lord, O most merciful Master, O Master of Mathura, when shall I see you again? Because of my not seeing you, my agitated heart has become unsteady. O beloved one, what shall I do now? In this verse, Madhavendra Puri instructs how to achieve ecstatic love for Krishna. By feeling separation from Krishna, one becomes spiritually situated. Madhavendra Puri sowed the seed of ecstatic love for Krishna within this material world and then departed. That seed later became a great tree in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I have incidentally described the passing away of Madhavendra Puri. Anyone who hears this must be considered very fortunate. Thus Ramachandra Puri stayed at Jagannath Puri. As customary for those in the renounced order, he would sometimes stay someplace and then go away. There was no certainty of where Ramachandra Puri would take his meal, for he would do so even uninvited. Nevertheless, he was very particular to keep account of how others were taking their meals. To invite Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would cost 320 kodis or small conch shells. This would provide lunch for three people, including Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and sometimes Kashishbar and Govinda. Every day the Lord would take his meal at a different place, and if someone was prepared to pay for a meal, the price was fixed at only four panas. Ramachandra Puri concerned himself with gathering all sorts of information about how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was situated, including his regulative principles, his lunch, his sleep, and his movements. Because Ramachandra Puri was interested only in finding faults, he could not understand the transcendental qualities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His only concern was finding faults, but still he could not find any. At last he found a fault, and he said, How can a person in the renounced order eat so many sweetmeats? 
If one eats sweets, controlling the senses is very difficult. In this way, Ramachandra Puri blasphemed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu before everyone, but nevertheless, he would regularly come to see the Lord every day. When they met, the Lord would offer him respectful obeisances, considering him a godbrother of his spiritual master. Ramachandra Puri's business, however, was to search for faults in the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that Ramachandra Puri was criticizing him before everyone. But whenever Ramachandra Puri came to see him, the Lord offered him respects with great attention. One day Ramchandra Puri came in the morning to the abode of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Seeing many ants, he said something to criticize the Lord. He said, Last night there was sugar candy here, therefore ants are wandering about. <laughs> Alas, this renounced sannyasi is attached to such sense gratification. After speaking in this way, he got up and left. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had heard rumors about Ramchandra Puri's blasphemy. Now he directly heard his fanciful accusations. Ants generally crawl about here, there, and everywhere. But Ramchandra Puri, looking for imaginary faults, criticized Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by alleging that there had been sweetmeats in his room. After hearing this criticism, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doubtful and apprehensive. Therefore, he called Govinda and instructed him as follows. He said, From today on, it will be a rule that I shall accept only one-fourth of a pot of Lord Jagannath's prasad and five gandhas worth of vegetables. If you bring any more than this, you will not see me here any more. Govinda relayed this message to all the devotees. When they heard it, they felt as if their heads had been struck by thunderbolts. All the devotees condemned Ramchandra Puri by saying, This sinful man has come here and taken our lives. That day, a Brahmin extended an invitation to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Govinda accepted only five gandhas worth of vegetables and a fourth of a pot of rice, the Brahmin, in great despair, struck his head with his hand and cried, Alas! Alas! Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ate only half of the rice and vegetables, and whatever remained was taken by Govinda. Thus both Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Govinda ate only half the food they needed. Because of this, all the other devotees gave up eating. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered Govinda and Kashishvar, You may both take alms elsewhere to fill your bellies. In this way, some days passed in great unhappiness. Hearing of all this, Ramchandra Puri went to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered his obeisances to Ramchandra Puri, worshipping his feet. Then Ramchandra Puri smiled and spoke to the Lord. He advised, It is not the business of a sannyasi to gratify his senses. He should fill his belly some way or other. I have heard that you have cut your eating in half. Indeed, I see that you are skinny. <laughs> Such dry renunciation is also not the religion of a sannyasi. A sannyasi eats as much as necessary to maintain his body, but he does not enjoy satisfying his senses materially. Thus a sannyasi becomes perfect in his spiritual advancement in knowledge. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, My dear Arjun, one cannot perform mystic yoga if he eats more than necessary, or needlessly fasts, sleeps, and dreams too much, or does not sleep enough. One should eat and enjoy his senses as much as necessary. One should properly endeavor to execute his duties, and one should regulate his sleep and wakefulness. Thus, one can become freed from material pains by executing mystic yoga. 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then humbly submitted, I am just like an ignorant boy and am like your disciple. It is my great fortune that you are instructing me. Hearing this, Ramchandra Puri got up and left. He also heard from various sources that all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were eating half as much as usual. The next day, Parmananda Puri and other devotees approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with great humility and submission. Parmananda Puri said, My godbrother Ramchandra Puri is by nature a bad critic. If you give up eating because of his words, what will be the profit? It is the nature of Ramchandra Puri that first he lets one eat as much as desired, and if one does not eat more than necessary, with great attention he makes him eat more. In this way he induces one to eat more than necessary, and then he directly criticizes him, saying, You eat so much. How much money do you have in your treasury? Also, by inducing sannyasis to eat so much, you spoil their religious principles. Therefore, I can understand that you have no advancement. You see, it is Ramachandra Puri's business to inquire always about how others are eating and conducting their daily affairs. The two kinds of activity rejected in the revealed scriptures constitute his daily affairs. One should see that because of the meeting of material nature and the living entity, the universe is acting uniformly. Thus, one should neither praise nor criticize the characteristics or activities of others. Of the two rules, Ramchandra Puri obeys the first by abandoning praise, but although he knows that the second is more prominent, he neglects it by criticizing others. Between the former rule and the latter rule, the latter is more important. Even where there are hundreds of good qualities, a critic does not consider them. Rather, he attempts by some trick to point out a fault in those attributes. One should not, therefore, follow the principles of Ramchandra Puri. Nevertheless, I have to say something against him because he is making our hearts unhappy. Why have you given up proper eating due to the criticism of Ramchandra Puri? Please accept invitations as before. This is the request of us all. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, why are all of you angry at Ramchandra Puri? He is expounding the natural principles of sannyas life. Why are you accusing him? For a sannyasi to indulge in satisfying the tongue is a great offense. The duty of a sannyasi is to eat only as much as needed to keep body and soul together. When they all requested very fervently that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu take a full meal, he still would not do so. Instead, he responded to their request by accepting half as much as usual. The cost for the food needed to invite Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was fixed at two panas of kodis, or 160 conch shells, and that food would be taken by two men and sometimes three. When a Brahmin, at whose home an invitation could not be accepted, invited the Lord, he would pay two panas of conch shells to purchase the prasad. When a Brahmin, at whose home an invitation could be accepted, invited him, the Brahmin would purchase part of the prasad and cook the rest at home. Even on a day when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was invited to dine by others, if Gadadhar Pandit, Bhagavan Acharya or Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya invited him, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had no independence. He would accept their invitations as they desired. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually descended to give happiness to the devotees. Thus he behaved in whatever way fit the time and circumstances. Because of his full independence, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sometimes behaved like a common man and sometimes manifested his godly opulence. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sometimes accepted Ramachandra Puri as his master and considered himself a servant, and sometimes the Lord, not caring for him, would see him as being just like a straw. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu behaved exactly like the Supreme Personality of Godhead, beyond the restriction of anyone's intelligence. Whatever he liked, he did, but all his activities were very beautiful. Thus Ramchandra Puri stayed for some days at Nilachal. 
Then he left to visit various holy places of pilgrimage. The devotees considered Ramchandra Puri to be like a great burden on their heads. When he left Jagannath Puri, everyone felt extremely happy, as if a great stone burden had suddenly fallen from their heads to the ground. After his departure, everything was happy once again. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted invitations as usual and led congregational chanting and dancing. Everyone else also accepted prasad without hindrances. If one's spiritual master rejects him, one becomes so fallen that he, like Ramchandra Puri, commits offenses even to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not consider the offenses of Ramchandra Puri, for the Lord considered him his spiritual master. However, his character instructed everyone about the result of offending the spiritual master. The character of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is full of nectar. Hearing about it is pleasing to the ear and mind. I write about the character of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. O oh, readers, please hear with attention, for thus you will easily receive ecstatic love for the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. This ends Chapter 8 of the Ankhya Leela. Ramchandra Puri criticizes the Lord. <laughs>